Hi, welcome students to exercise 20a, uh, solving sinusoidal equations graphically and algebraically. Okay, so here we have uh, an equation. Um, we did this in exercise 18. Uh, sketch this graph. Okay, so I want to sketch the graph over the interval negative 1 to 5. And notice that the vertex, or the maximum I should say, that's where the coast graph starts, the maximum starts at negative 1. Um, all right, so uh, let's look at the information I have. I know that the central axis is negative 1, so I'm going to just draw my central axis so we know where it is. I know that the amplitude is 2, Okay, so I know I have to go 2 above the central axis and 2 below the central axis. So again, those red lines are just to help me guide. Um, I know that our graph is going to start at negative 1, so um, I'm just going to put this line here. I know the graph, the coast maximum value is going to be at negative 1. Now, the only thing I really have to calculate is the period. And the period is going to be equal to 2 pi divided by b, which is pi over 3. So this is the same thing as saying 2 pi divided by pi over 3, right? Which is the same thing as saying 2 pi times 3 over pi. Those pi's cancel out. So we have 6. And it's not a, it's not a fluke that the period is 6 and the difference between negative 1 and 5 is 6. So that means I'm sketching one full period of this graph. Okay, so this is, the, the coast graph needs to be sketched within this box over here. We know that the coast graph starts at the maximum. So I have a maximum that starts here. And we'll finish at a maximum. We know that the minimum will be the point in between those two. So the point in between those two is at x equals 2. So this is where your minimum is going to be. We know we're going to cross the central axis between the max and the min. So it would be at a half here. Right here. And we would be at 3.5 right here. And here is your graph. Okay, so, oh, oops, I don't want to extend here because I asked to only sketch between between negative 1 and 5, so I'm going to stop at negative 1, and I'm going to stop at 5. Okay, here's one graph. So now the solve the following equation algebraically. So I want to solve this equation using some algebra. So I'm going to need to solve for x, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this negative 1 over, so plus 1 on each side. So I'm going to have negative 1 equals to 2 cos pi over 3, x plus 1. Okay, and then I'm going to divide each side by 2. So just divide this side by 2, divide this side by 2. So what I have left is negative 1 half equals to cos pi over 3, x plus 1. Okay, so now um, you got to treat this a little bit like this is the angle. So this is all within the cos of the angle. So this is all within the angle where our va variable usually is found. So we, we basically have to do our inverse cos function on both sides. So you basically do cos of negative 1 of negative 1 half is equal to, and if I do the cos of negative 1 on that side, all I left, I'm left with is pi over 3 times 1 plus x. Okay, well, we know this through exact values, so I'm going to start back up here. Okay, we know this through exact values. We know when cos equals to negative a half. Uh, this is from your unit circle. So if you think of your unit circle, cos is x, so it's, if this is the unit circle, it would be right here about. So it would be a 2 pi over, four, uh, over 3 and 4 pi over 3. So this would create two different equations here. We would get the equation, oops, I need a pencil. We would get the equation 2 pi over 3 equals to pi over 3 x plus 1 and I'd also have the equation 4 pi over 3 equals to pi over 3 x plus 1 so again this is just simply solving um, the the equation on the first first unit circle which would be those two values okay so next well I need to solve for x so I need to solve for x here Right, so x is the variable. So I'm going to multiply by 3 on each side. 
just to get rid of the fractions here. So multiply by 3, multiply by 3, that's a 3. So the 3 is going to cancel that, 3 is going to cancel that. What we have left is 2 pi equals 2 pi times x plus 1. We're going to divide by by both sides to get rid of that pi. So then I simply have left at 2 equals 2, x plus 1. I bring the 1 over. I have x equals 1. Okay? And I'm going to do the exact same work on the other side, except I'm going to do it without showing all the work. So it times by 3 on both sides. So you're left with 4 pi equals to pi x plus 1. You divide by pi both sides, and you subtract 1. So you have x equals 3. Okay, so there are two solutions to this equation. So when x equals to 1, this is true. And when x equals to 3, this is true. Well, what if I wanted to solve this exact same equation graphically? Well, all I would do, since I've already sketched this graph, I could say, well, my first graph could be 2 cos pi over 3 x plus 1 minus 1. So this would be the graph that we sketched over here. And we would just make this graph equal to negative 2. So y equals to negative 2 would be our other equation. So if I go back to our graph, here's our graph here. So that's the graph of y1. So if I was to sketch a line, y equals to negative 2, which would be this line over here. So I'm off by a tiny bit. But our solution would be x equals 1 and x equals 3. So this would be y1 here. And this would be y2. And then these two would be our solutions. So again, this is our solutions for C. Okay, and, and they just simply match our solving algebraically. So you can solve these types of equations right here. You can solve these types of equations, whoops, we're going to the wrong spot, um, right here, algebraically, so the way we just did right here, or you can solve them graphically here. I might ask, and probably will ask, for you to do both. Okay, on the next page here it says, we're still talking about the first page, so use the graph to explain why the following equation has no solution. So this is the graph of that we sketched, and you can take a look back at it if you'd like. So this is the graph that we sketched. We're trying to find out when is it equal to y equals 3. Well, if you take a good look at the function, um, the graph never has this value of y equals to 3. Um, so therefore, uh, that's how we're going to explain it. We're going to say uh, the graph y equals to 2 cos pi over 3 x plus 3 minus 1, uh, never crosses uh, y equals to 3, right? Just like we solved the last question, where we just drew a straight line. Well, that line will never be crossed. So therefore, this is why there is no solution to this equation. Okay, so a slightly different question this time. I've given you the graph of y equals to 3 theta plus 1. Uh, sorry, 3 theta plus 2. So this is the graph. So again, all we've done to the sine function is stretched it by a factor of 3, right? So it goes up 3, down 3, and we made plus 2. So now the central axis is 2. Uh, the period is still 2 pi because we didn't change the value of b. And we still start on the central axis at y equals 0. Sorry, at x equals 0. I bet on the y axis because we didn't translate the theta, right? We didn't do plus or subtract. All right, so graphically solve the equation sine theta equals to negative 2 over 3 over the interval 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so I, I'm going to use this graph to solve this equation. Well, if you look closely, let's see if, uh, no, nope, I'm going to talk about the note in a second. Okay, so if I make y equals 0, we got 3 sine theta plus 2. And if I solve for that, you're going to have negative 2 equals to 3 sine theta. And you divide by 3, you get negative 2 thirds equals to sine theta. Well, look, that's the equation I've asked to solve. So really, all I've done is I've taken my original graph here, and I've made y equals 0. So anywhere where y equals <laughs> 0, so here, where we're crossing our x-axis, that would be the solution 
of this equation over 0 to 2 pi. So the solution would be simply right here and right here. So graphically solve is just identifying the point on the graph. So these two points would be the solution of our graph. And here's in the note here. So to find the zeros of y equals to 3 theta plus 2, we, we produce the equation 0 equals to 3 theta plus 2. So we basically make y equals 0. So exactly what I did here. And this equation simplifies to 3 theta since sine theta equals to negative 2 thirds. Thus the zeros are the solution. So it's just being able to identify that this solution could be you could be solved graphically using this um, this equation and just finding the zeros of that would be the solution. Notice that if I extended the interval to all the possible values, we would introduce this and this one and this one. We would introduce all the zeros as possible solutions. All right. Good luck with the lesson, and we'll see in chat. We'll see in class.